let's now talk about the relationship between Ionic and AngularJS. How does Ionic make use of AngularJS in building the Ionic applications? What are some of the interesting ways that Ionic uh, takes advantage of AngularJS framework to provide us the ability to design mobile applications? When you get to the core of an Ionic application, you begin to realize that it is nothing more than an Angular single page application. So all the Angular features that are available are accessible within Ionic. So whatever you have learned about Angular, you can easily apply those techniques even with an Ionic application. So that's the reason why this course follows the Angular course in this series, because once you get a full understanding of the capabilities of the Angular framework, then it becomes straightforward to understand how Ionic applications work. In particular, Ionic makes use of the Angular UI router for developing these single page applications. In the previous course, we had dealt with single page applications using the UI router. So all those um, techniques that we use there are equally applicable in Ionic. In addition to what AngularJS brings to the platform, Ionic also adds its own services and its own directives to Angular to make it easy to design hybrid mobile applications. So in particular, Ionic adds services like loading, action sheet, and many others. We will examine some of these as we go through this course. Also, you will see me using several Ionix custom directives. So these are all AngularJS directives that the Ionic team built in order to make it feasible to use the Angular framework to design a mobile application. So we will see Ionic uh, um, uh, directives like Ion View, Ion Content, Ion List, Ion Tabs as we go through this course. And we'll see how we make use of these directives in order to design the templates that are used within our Ionic application. In particular, the Ionic framework, as I mentioned, is uh, using the Angular UI router for designing the single page application. Ionic team adds its own extensions to the UI router to make it appropriate to be used in the mobile environment. So all standard UI router features that you're familiar with are all accessible within an Ionic application. In addition, Ionic adds in particular an Ion nav view, which is used to render your templates. So where we used UI view in the Angular single page applications with the UI router, we're going to use the Ion nav view in its place. Not only that, with this directive, Ionic also adds in the mechanism to keep track of your navigation history. So when, you're, when you use the back button and on a, an Android device, or when you click on the back button in the um, header bar of an iOS or an uh, Android device, you would be able to navigate back in history. And all this information is automatically tracked by the Ionic extensions to Angular UI router. As I mentioned, the Ionic nav bar or Ion nav bar uh, is uh, a header bar that keeps track of navigation information and also displays the current location of the application automatically in the title in the header bar as you navigate through the various pages of your Angular single page application. So this brings a nice mobile UI touch to the platform. <laughs> in addition, Ionic also provides an Ion nav back button. In the exercise next, you will see the usage of both the Ion nav bar and the Ion nav back button 
when we design the template for the sidebar. So with the addition of the ion nav back button, when you navigate down the hierarchy, there is always a back button that is put into the header that enables you to go back to the previous location in the navigation hierarchy. So the back button is added using the ion nav back button directive, angular directive. With a mobile device, side menus is an important and interesting way of providing navigation for your application. Side menus are things that uh, a menu that can be swapped onto your screen by a gesture on the screen. So this is supported in Ionic by using the Ion Side Menus Directive. So the Ion Side Menus Directive provides the container within which you define your content and you define your sidebar. So to define these two, Ionic provides two additional directives, the Ion Side Menu Content. Obviously, as the name implies, the Ion Side Menu Content Directive enables you uh, to add content to your page. So this is the container for the main content that you're going to display in your page. So inside this Ion Side Menu Content, you would have an Ion Nav View to which you will attach the templates, various templates of your single page application as you navigate through the various states in your UI router. Also, the Ion side menu is a container for the side menu. So when you do a left to right gesture, the side menu will be brought up on the screen. You can also do a right to left gesture depending on how you configure the side menu. You can have the side menu either on the left side or on the right side. And also you can add a button that will enable you to, um, to show and hide the side menu in the header bar. So we will see all this in the exercise that follows this lesson. Since Ionic is an Angular UI router based single page application, you would need to define Ionic templates. So this is where the Ion View Directive comes to our aid. So the Ion View Directive specifies or is the container for the view content, both navigational and the header bar also can be included inside the Ion View so that it can be displayed in your um, screen. The Ion View takes a, uh, an additional attribute called as the View Title. And this is what it makes uh, available to the Ion Nav View so that you can set up the View Title depending on which page is being displayed. So the View Title can be appropriately changed. The Ion view also will contain inside an Ion content directive. The Ion content directive is the directive that provides the container for displaying the content area. So inside here, you can use Ionic's custom scroll view for you so that the content can be scrolled within your application. We will see the use of both of these in the exercise. Next. So moving on to the next exercise, we're going to go to the scaffolded application that we developed in the previous exercise. And then we are going to modify that application to turn it into the confusion application that we want for to develop in this um, course. So step by step, we're going to modify the uh, scaffolded application. So in the first step, we will create the framework for designing the Confusion app. So we will set up the navigation elements and then we'll set up the bare bones templates. Thereafter, we will start adding the content to the Ionic application.